So in today's video, we're going to focus on the portrait in particular. So remember, we uh, established just a simple shape for where we think that the portrait is going to fit. So at this point, you should be you should be familiar with the techniques that um, I will be using for the portrait drawing. But nonetheless, um, what we're going to do is just take a look at the simple gesture of the head. For instance, the movement. So we have a center line and a little axis here for the eyebrows and the eyes. And right away, you can see, hopefully, with this simple little indication of the axis of the eyebrows and the eyes, that the head is kind of tilted down. Um, so we have a tilt down turn three quarter relative to us. It's pretty much standard three quarter with a tilt down. So here we have a simple shape for the nose and a simple shape for the mouth. Now the only difference um, I find that when you're adding a portrait onto a figure drawing, remember we drew out the figure last time, um, things can get kind of a little more complicated in terms of your dimensions. So for instance, I have a very set uh, measurement for the for this distance here from the forehead to the chin. Now I don't think it's the end of the world if something gets a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, uh, but I'm going to try to keep everything within these parameters. So let's go ahead and put in our little indications here for the eye socket. So an eye socket here, following the angle that goes this way. We have another eye socket here. And let's remember that this drawing, the intention of this drawing is to uh, solve the mystery of proportion for the final painting. Remember, each stage is going to build onto the next, just like we did with that um, the last one that we finished up. Uh, I hope you enjoyed yesterday's video. Yesterday's video was the continuation of that last uh, head and shoulders, or the previous head and shoulders painting that we did. So I'm just taking a look at the corner of the eye socket using simple straight lines and angles, just placing down uh, simple shapes for where the eye sockets are going to fit. So roughly about there. So I'm going to think about certain elements of character. So for instance, I'm going to think about the the glabella on this model is a little bit more of a rectangular kind of average sized rectangular glabella and uh, glabella just means this area right here. The philtrum is the next area that I want to look at. So the philtrum is the distance from the bottom of the root of the nose to the middle of the upper lip. Now that's where we're really going to start to describe this model. And even without having too many details or shadows or anything like that, we can still get a pretty good likeness. And I think, I ponder, I'm not entirely sure, but this might be how caricaturists uh, try to get a very quick likeness of their models or sitters by observing these characteristics. So the philtrum again is from the root of the nose to the top of the upper lip and on her it's a little smaller and um, very very slightly smaller than the uh, average distance. So here's the corner of one side of the mouth, the upper middle portion of the mouth, and here is the furthest corner to the right. And then, of course, we have the bottom. So the trick here is not to get attached to any 
marks that we make right away. The, the trick here is to try to remain as objective as possible and not get too attached because now we're entering, really entering into the block-in stage. So in the block-in stage, we're going to have very simple shapes for each feature, but we're going to be moving them around accordingly until we get them to fit in the proper relations to one another. So for instance, the eyes, I'm going to keep them very, very simple and with the anticipation that um, I may have to move them around maybe 20 or 80 times until I get them in the exact location that I want them to be in. It's not always perfect. I mean, it doesn't always work out first try each time, all the time. You may think someone like me that's done, um, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of portraits that I would just get everything first try each time, and that's just not the case. This kind of stuff takes time, it takes patience, and patience is a learned thing. You can really develop your patience. So I know it looks kind of droopy right now, but we have a simple little shape there for the, for the eye. And simple is the key word, just one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, a very few shapes there. So let's see here, let's take a look at the, so after standing back, I realized that this shape might have to grow uh, exponentially, the upper eyelid, but that's not really going to bother me. Uh, what I really want to focus on is the proportion. So from the top of the head, to the eyebrow is about the eyebrow to the bottom of the chin. Now typically that measurement should work for the tear ducts to the chin. So this distance typically should equal to the top of the forehead. So the reason that we're seeing a little bit less of this is either I messed up or it's because of the perspective. The model's head is tilted down. But in any case, we're going to keep moving these shapes around and let's go ahead and add in the light and dark. So here is one shadow. And we're going to keep these shadows very simplistic. We're not going to get into too many values. Perhaps a few half tones here and there, but not much more than that. So we're going to add a few values. And the values are primarily just going to be light and dark. And they're going to help us see from a different vantage point. I don't mean literally from a different vantage point, but figuratively, putting in light and dark should kind of trick our brains into seeing in a different, in a different light. So I'm going to fill in the rest of the dark around here. So now that we have some shapes of light and dark, uh, we can once again look at the uh, simple shapes in a different uh, in a different way. So I think that. Okay, I want to make sure that I don't lose this point here at the bottom. So um, again, I'm going to take another measurement here. So the measurement that I'm going to take is from the bottom of the chin to the eyebrows. So it almost pretty much matches with the top of the forehead, but actually the shape needs to be a little bit taller. So. I'm going to show you how I change things around. So actually, I'm starting to notice anyway that the eyebrows are a little too close to this simple shape for the for the eyes. Remember I said I'm probably going to move this maybe, I don't know what number I said, but I'm going to be moving the features around a lot in the block-in stage, and that's perfectly natural. 
That's what the block in is for. It's for gathering information. No worries here. So we're going to move this shape up to where we think it should be. Take a measurement once again. And that's that's a little bit better. Oh yeah, and so if you're wondering about these these calipers, I actually used to work on um, motorcycles. So this is just, uh, I mean, I wasn't an advanced mechanic or anything, just for hobby. Anyway, so this is a Pittsburgh six inch composite digital caliper. It's just a caliper, any caliper would do. And if you wanna know exactly what materials I'm using, uh, if you're new to these videos, you can always go ahead and scroll down to the description box below and those and that information will be typed up for you. So I'm going to take the stump now and I'm going to just lightly ghost out the eye. And again, we're going to reevaluate the um, the elements of likeness. I don't even know what to call it. The uh, Basically the stuff that makes this look like the model. So again, we're gonna reevaluate this shape here, the glabella. It's pretty straight, like I said, kind of rectangular, like a, I don't know, it's almost like a trapezoid. And um, the philtrum, again, the philtrum's pretty compressed. So I think that's fairly good. Let's go ahead and take some charcoal from the hair and put in a little tone here for the mouth. I mean, I don't want to have too many values, but just a little something there for the mouth. Now, the next thing that I'm going to look at for the likeness is the cheekbone, the zygomatic region. So I'm going to work our way here from the corner of the eye socket. So there's the corner of the eye socket. So the next element of likeness um, that I want to look at is the cheekbone. So the cheekbone actually comes out a little further than I had before. So her cheekbones are pretty pronounced. The cheekbones are pretty pronounced. So basically just looking at the outside contour here. And we're going to have to look at the other side as well. So I'm going to go ahead and take my stump. And rather than it just being a simple contour, you know what, never mind. Let's just keep it as a contour for now. Uh, let's notice that the hair is wrapping around and it's actually describing this area right here. It's resting on the cheek. So it's actually describing the cheek on the other side pretty well without even getting into any value changes. But I do want to put in a little bit of a half tone here. Not much, but a little bit. All right, so the next thing I'm going to look at, so we have the zygomatic bone. The next thing I want to look at is the chin. So right now I have her mandible kind of like really far out. So it's actually a little softer, a little more of a smooth mandible. So this is really um, one of the ways that we can get towards a likeness as opposed to just copying the outlines of the photograph and then calling it a day. Instead, we're looking at the actual structure itself. We can also think about it in two dimensions if we just want to look at the simple uh, shape as well. There's many ways to do it. So again, now we push the corner of the mandible inwards a little bit. And now we want to look for evidence of this over here on the other side. So if this is the furthest point down from the chin following the center line, this shape here is going to taper up like that. And then right here, as we 
approach the point equidistant from here from the center line, uh, this is going to taper in this fashion here. Now that of course the eyes are going to necessitate a little more information uh, to get closer to the likeness of the model. So it's a little bit of a shape there. Sorry, I think my hand was covering that shot. So basically just pushed a little, subtracted a little bit of charcoal there. And the same kind of thing we're going to do for the eyebrows. Or sorry, the uh, upper eyelid, excuse me. Trying not to cover the shot. Let's use a kneaded eraser instead. Just looking at patterns of light and dark right now. Now let's remember the model is looking down. So she's looking down, her head's tilted down a little bit. So we're actually not going to see that much of the sclera, the white of the eye. So when it comes down to trying to get the likeness of any particular model, trying to make the model or the drawing resemble the model it's really not it's really not to your advantage to look at any small details so for instance I don't even have the eyebrows or sorry I don't even have the the pupil in there really about these large shapes in relation to one another. So our eye looks a little bit, the eye looks a little bit swollen there. So let's go ahead and push that up. So I, th I'd like to think of uh, Drawing is kind of the root of all, all that is good and all that is evil in painting. So trying to solve the problem of proportion in a transfer drawing like what we're doing now is going to be very, very beneficial for the, the final painting. I, I usually don't like to just jump right into a painting and then just try to continue to build it that way. I mean, I have done that before, I'm not going to lie. And sometimes it worked, but usually it won't, at least for me. I like being able to work through uh, these, uh, these challenges of proportion, shape, light, and dark in the transfer drawing. And I think my chamois is kind of falling apart now. All right, so we have all of our elements in here now. What we really want to do is continue to tweak them. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a little side plane. So almost have all our elements. So we have a little side plane for the nose. Now the picture is a little exposed, a little overexposed, um, which is actually to our benefit, to be honest, for the block in stage. It might give us some trouble when we get into uh, refining the values, but for now, the uh, overexposure of this picture actually kind of helps. So we have all the elements that we need. Now we just need to fine tune the way they fit amongst each other. So 
Well, notice how I used the stump kind of as a drawing tool. I'm just taking charcoal right from the hair. Now, typically, I like to uh, use graphite for a transfer drawing. But like I said before, uh, in the last video, I noticed that when I created the transfer drawing using graphite, uh, it kind of was hard for the camera to pick up the lines. So that's really the only reason I'm using charcoal right now. Shape has to come out a little bit further that way. So you'll notice I do get a little bit uh, silent when I'm kind of in the zone or uh, in general, just focused. Just throw in a little highlight for the lower lip. A little bit more light here for the for the tear duct. Now, standing back is going to be pretty important. So as I stand back, I notice that the nose, I pulled it out this way, but I might have pushed it a little too far. So it's really a push and pull, I mean literally push and pull. Now let's go in and draw the rest of the hair. Now I don't want to do too much in terms of uh, value since uh, this is just going to be a drawing that we're going to want to transfer but I think I want to figure out a little more information for the hair. I think the hair is going to be kind of important to the composition. Just kind of the rhythms and the movement of the, uh, the shapes of light and dark. So uh, speaking of rhythm and movement, um, there's a shape here that's kind of not correct. It's actually kind of tapering in this way. So it's more of a taper downwards like this. Then we have another little section of hair tapering this way. And then down here. And all the way down here.
and this little section of hair is going all the way down forming a little shape over here so just following the little patterns of light and dark now I'm going to use the stump to just suggest some of the light and the hair A little bit of light going this way. This is also a very quick and easy way to draw hair with charcoal. Now notice with my stump I have uh, some tape even on the stump. Uh, so this is the light side of the stump, dark side of the stump. So I clean off the light side of the stump with my chamois cloth. And I just use it to subtract light. And with the dark side of the stump, I use it to add charcoal. Or just to kind of blend the charcoal in with, uh, in these dark shapes. A little bit more dark over here. And again, when I transfer this, I'm only going to be transferring basically the contours and the light and shadow regions of this drawing. So I don't want to get too invested in the values right now. I'm thinking I might do a value study and a color study uh, before getting into the paint. That is the final painting, but I don't know. We'll see. A little bit more dark here. Just looking at simple abstract patterns. And I usually tell myself, if the hair is the only thing I got right, then it probably wasn't a good day. So hopefully that's not the case here. But again, this is going to be a, uh, a this is going to be a transfer drawing that I'm going to be working on for quite a bit. So I'm allowing myself the time to to make mistakes. And it's all right. So I think we're going to wrap up today's video by uh, re-examining the characteristics of the likeness. So again, this was an important part of it, the glabella, and making sure that the glabella uh, is reminiscent of the model's glabella, which uh, hers is more rectangular like this, but it kind of uh, tapers, gets smaller and smaller very slightly. The other part was the philtrum, that, that is the distance between the root of the nose. Sorry, I can't hold this still. The distance between the root of the nose and the middle of the upper lip. And uh, on this model, it was a little more compressed uh, than uh, other pictures that we've drawn out. The other thing to notice is the cheekbone structure. This outside contour uh, communicates basically that the zygomatic bone is coming out at a very distinct angle. And then the other side also follows through with that same type of angle. It's important to take note of these very, very important characteristics in terms of getting the likeness of the individual model. Another thing again is the, the mandible. So right about here, this little angle here uh, is very well described by this contour. And then on the other side, we imagine the mandible moving around towards the other side. And basically the mouth, and we, we might end up moving the mouth just like we did in the last 
uh, transfer drawing. I moved the mouth, I don't know how many times in the last painting, but that's all right. I mean, the mouth is one of the easiest things really to move around, but I, I think it's okay in the location where it's at. Now, again, on the topic of lightness, I uh, like this. The details, details are nothing. The little tiny bits of information, the things that we think that creates likeness. I mean, sure, it plays a role, the little tiny minutia, but in general, I think it's much more important to get these large shapes in order and looking at the basically, I don't know what we're going to call them, anatomical landmarks or something. Glabella, Filtrum, Zygomatic, Mandible. Making sure that all of these structures are reminiscent of what we are observing. And like I always say, keep your shape simple and easy to work with uh, so that when the time comes to make changes, those changes are simple and easy to manage. But in this case, I think that the initial block in for the portrait is, is about good. So tomorrow, we're going to go ahead and uh, explore some more information for the hands. So I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you tomorrow.